What it does, what is poppin', what is crackin' like and everybody, my name is Uncle We Drink C. Yo, yo, what it do, it's Nosh Doggy, I am uh, THC infused today. What's going on, mate? Mate. Oh yeah, welcome to Bad Habits episode 110. Just Notion and mm. I in the building today, and Notion, as he just said, is joining me for a weed, weed drink, drink spectacular. I have a story about mine. Tell me your story about your weed drink. Look at the color of that, mate. Well, that's gorgeous. That's a 10 milligram one, right? Truth. Yes, it is, sir. Um, the color being cranberry. Uh, it's a cranberry ginger ale from Sweet Justice, and it's 10 milligrams, and it looks like it's going to give me a nice time. Fucking oath, mate. That's a beaut. Um, that glass there. Look at that classic mascot brewery glass well, You like that, mate? Shasta mascot. Big fan. One, uh, of, my, one of my most cherished glasses. Love you it. Know why? I know why you probably uh, acquired it. Glass. Yeah, I know how you get down. Um, the yeah. old notion. Couldn't take him anywhere, but the new notion. Couldn't take a cunt like me near your place. So that one's a banger. That is available in Canada. I have a special one. This is a company called Highly oh. Casual that I got. Don't ask me how, but I got it from Michigan. Um, and uh, it's a company my good friend Dave. You know Dave, Dave Seacott. He used yep, to work Dave for Brew Detroit. Now he works for yeah. this company uh, called Highly Casual. They are at Drink Highly Casual if you want to check it out. They're, I think they're just available in Michigan yeah. right now. This is Strawberry like Watermelon. Yeah, it's a cool name, man. They just started doing these drinks, so he moved from beer into the cannabis industry. So... Uh, this one's only two milligrams, so it's super light, but that is personally what I like for these Sunday nights. I had one of those Sweet Justice 10 milligrams maybe a month or two ago on the pod with you. And I don't okay, know if you remember, up. but I was fucked. Like, it's a lot for me. 10 <laughs> milligrams is yeah, like... You definitely don't seem fucked when you get fucked, but I understand what you mean. Like, you get the body tingles and shit, and you're like little, like... Um, this is yeah, not where I needed to be. Yeah. No, it's and it's, all right. little, it's awkward Especially when you're on a pod. You're hosting. Exactly. Yeah. You're trying to keep things going. We're trying to have a conversation and I'm fucking lost. And uh, it's, a, it's a whole ordeal. Cut so. off your tits. Hey. Big oh, off your tits. That. Yeah, man. I it's... have a couple of bevos and just a bit tired by the end. So I'm just like... Brr. You're a lot better at handling your... Uh, I'm good with... I'm pretty decent how I'm drunk uh, publicly because of the pods, like weekly. Yeah. But, <laughs> so I'm, I'm good at that. Getting high, I'm not as comfortable doing it. Like I usually save if I'm just chilling on a night, I'll have the two, two and a half milligram drinks or gummies or whatever. If on a Saturday, like last night, I had a five milligram gummy, but I've got a couple 10 milligram gummies that I'm pondering why I purchased them now. Cause I'm like, oh fuck, (laughs) is that the move? You have to have it with lunch and like have it in the daytime. Maybe so you, I don't know, not daytime, like late afternoon. Make sure you got nothing on the schedule. Doesn't ever happen. Because if it's problem. such a high percentage, oh, sorry, like a high milligram, then just like have lots of food and shit. It might help. I mean, I guess I could just bite it in half too, cut it in half. It's, I think it's dead too. Ten, it's not that bad. I'm, not, I'm just like a bit of, I don't know. It's just like it fucking throws me and it's like- It's, it's little... distracting. Sometimes you can get distracted by the high. It's like- Yeah. And I got always got shit to I, do. I don't know. Like you always have shit to do as well, but I got, I got like email stuff to do. Like things- Yeah, that's why like, I don't do edibles. I, man, if I had edibles, I wouldn't be. I'd be on the couch, literally, like stuck in the fucking thing. Like yeah. I don't do edibles. Make my body just like, all right, that's enough. Just stop. Mm. And I just, uh, yeah, not really keen on the stop. So when I smoke weed and drink beers, and you know, I guess drinking this is going to make me a little bit jittery and fucked. We'll see how the episode goes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Usually edibles just destroy me, so I avoid them all the time. I understand. You have to know your body and how but it responds. I have yeah. Yes, I got some, uh, uh, some all those the Doritos ropes. and the third rope. Yeah, those I'm still petrified to do the Doritos because they're five hundred. Cut, cut off like a um, not even that know, much, even that much. Of an inch. Yeah, I have to do like a tiny, tiny little bit and see how it goes. Uh, yeah, I'm just be go. Yeah, I'm just being scared. I'm, I'm not going to have them. They're just sitting in the cupboard, mate. So well, stop throw them going. Yeah, let's fucking go. <laughs> Happy Christmas to us, huh? Speaking hey. of happy Christmas, that was a terrible segue. You and I got to hang out this week in uh, a Collective Arts, a brewery in Toronto on Tuesday night. They had a holiday tasting event, which was, was uh, yeah, it was a good time, man. It was really good to see you. 
Um, it was cool to talk to dudes there. I hadn't seen, you know, some of the, we saw our friend Matt, who, well, I don't think you knew him, but uh, I'd known him for a couple of years now. Yeah, um, I met him once before. I mean, once, yeah, he's a brewer. At, uh, he used to be at the Hamilton one. Now he's at the Toronto one. He's also from Melbourne, so uh, good dude. Um, talking about football, talking about Sainers, I love yeah. No, he was like, he was like, I don't know. Apparently, they had some dramas. He was like embarrassed about. It wasn't Kane? Like, fucking gone. Kane. Kane, the Sainers can't. Let's fucking yeah. go. Yeah, it wasn't too keen on the Sainers, but that's all right. You know, that's all right. So, uh, shouts to shouts to Matt. Uh, but that was a good time. Um, just yeah, man, we got to we'd be out and about. It's really funny. I was telling you, like, one of the funny things about living here now is that going to Toronto is something I thought I would do super regularly and it would be easy um, and no problem. But, like, it's funny living in a – it's still a big city, but it's a smaller city and it's hardly ever any traffic. And if it is, it's not much. Whereas, like, Toronto is just constant traffic. And it's, I, I, I've never found traffic, like, so annoying. I fucking hate right. traffic. And it's like one of those things now, it's like, it's easy to not go to Toronto because I'm just like, fuck that. I'm not dealing with, I'm not dealing with traffic, man. You can suck my dick from the back. Traffic it's, is trash. I definitely agree. Yeah. It's a bit of a turn off, but it was actually a really good run. Everything was sweet out there. So uh, good time. Yep. That was a fun thing uh, fuck this week. Uh, today, you, you dropped mm. a single. Tell us about that, mate. Hey, hey, happy release date of fucking no dog so basically i made some beats as the kids know yeah chuck up a sound effect let's go let's well, what go are we gonna do? what do you feel i feel like a bit of a there you go everyone that's fuck does. goes yeah um you know everyone knows i make beats i talk about it a lot and uh sometimes i dabble into different genres and truth be told before i started making lots of hip-hop beats i actually did make a lot of house beats i love vocal house i used to go to fucking you know like raves and like shit like that and those kind of clubs in australia when i was like 18, 19, 20. Shelf Had a few and mates that were DJs at back chilling on Bickies, shelf and Bickies, whatever. That's your your MO, but you know, I'm out here. <laughs> so I went to lots of, you know, raves in Hawthorne and the inner city and stuff like that. And uh, I really just love that vocal house shit when they put like a soul sample over like some fucking really solid drums. And uh, yeah, so in 2017, I made a beat with like an old soul sample on it. And um, I'll see if I can find out what exactly what that old soul sample was. But um, yeah, so I was I was updating my um, notionbeats.com as we talked about in previous episodes as well. And, you know, I just found this in the folders. I was like organizing shit on my hard drive. So I was like, okay, I need to finish this to fuck off. And then I actually made some amendments to the arrangement, made the song a little shorter, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, it's an old Laura Lee sample and she's like a 60s soul singer and I didn't really know much about her. So cool. anyway, um. It's just basically, yeah, soul sample on a house beat, and it makes me feel awesome. I want to dance in the kitchen and fucking clean this motherfucker, you know, my whole house up. And, yeah, so it's just a random song, and I wanted to put something out. I haven't put anything out for ages. I've been inspired by uh, producers like Kenny Beats lately because he just, you know, he puts out a lot of shit. And I guess, you know, it just made me feel like this is sitting around. It's good. Like, why let it gather dust on my hard drive? So, yeah, I mastered it and chucked it out to like literally a couple of hours ago. So, uh, check out Notion Bandcamp site. So, it's notion.bandcamp.com and uh, Notion Baby on SoundCloud. I chucked it up on there for the moment. I'm going to put it on uh, all the other DSPs and I'll, I'll get it fucking out there. But, yeah, man, just get shelf or goog and fucking have a dance in the kitchen. What's it called? So it's, it's called, yeah, Since Never. And, uh, that's no, there's no reference. There's no, that's just what I decided to call the beat. That's what the beat's name is. And I was like, I'm not going to rename it. So that's called Since Never. And it's, uh, it's a good tune. Check her out. Fuck yeah, man. Love seeing new notion music. So there's no rapping vocals. This is like essentially a, a, a house it's a producer song. song. Yeah. It's just, so it's cool. just a beat that I made. It's just a, you know, it's a production. It's a production of notion. It's not like I'm not rapping on it. I could have done some funny shit, but I don't think that would have really been tasteful. So, yeah, I kept it like strictly, you know, just vocal house track, and just to show, just to show people that you know I got some diversity. I can make something different that's outside of hip hop and soul and trap and kind of R and B ish vibes that I do. So yeah, that's cool. I love it. That's awesome, dude. Congrats on that. Um, I'm just taking video. I remember yeah, because I got to do a reel for uh, Dave with the weed drink. I was like, oh, I'll just take some footage. Perfect. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right there, because it. it's against the beer thing. But no, that's fucking awesome, dude. I'm very happy that you're uh you got some music out. 
um, first of a bunch. It's, it's cool. We're just knocking shit out for the end of the year, um, getting things out because you've got that. And then by Toxic City Volume 2 drops this coming Friday, December 16th. Pretty oh, stoked that's... about that. Been talking, talking to Smokewell about the uh, promo. I'm going to get it out to DJs either today or tomorrow. Um, and we're trying to figure out some promo shit. And maybe because now we're close, we might meet up this week and just shoot like a um, like a Piff Marty style. People haven't know about it. I don't know if we talked about this. But if you go mm. follow this dude, Piff Marty, uh, P-I-F-F-M-A-R-T-I on Instagram. And uh, he's a fucking legend. We came across him because of uh, one of our clients um, from our agency. And we worked with him. He's a consummate professional. So he's a rapper, but he also worked for, I don't know, he might still work for uh, VaynerMedia, like Gary Vee's company. So oh, wow. he's like a marketer and a rapper who only did music videos with his phone. That's it. Did everything vertical yep. and he would caption them and he would do um, uh, like maybe just one verse from the song. And it was, and then sometimes he'd be in like a studio set up and he'd have his microphone, he'd just say stuff and it's all captioned. It's just a really interesting approach to social media for an artist. And he's gone mm-hmm. up and he's like got hundred, like pushing 200,000 uh, followers right now, which is great. So yeah. like he inspired, I've already just started getting them out, but uh, we got Dan to cut because Dan works for our company. So he cut a bunch of, he's in the process now of cutting just single verses less than a minute from a bunch of songs from the music videos and then captioning it and making it all vertical. Most things are already positioned in the middle of the screen anyway. Um, so Dan's yeah. been doing that uh, and cutting verses. So when I get ones of you, I'll put it on TMF and then um, do a collab post for you. Sick. Just for additional content, super simple. Put it up. It was kind of inspired by Piff. So I said to Dylan to Love smoke it. well, you know, maybe we could do something like that. We we have an idea for one of the songs uh, where we want to do a um, a, a one take video for even more, which is uh, Sweet. Okay. I think could be a pretty fun one. But we won't do that just now. Maybe we'll do that in January. And uh, maybe okay. now we thought we could meet up and just film a bunch of stuff just vertical. Even if we just do random footage or like do a, sh- a, a piff style music video like a one, almost like a, a you know don't do too many takes like he found a couple we'll find a couple locations or whatever, one location just do it all there like piff does and just take a few different angles a few close-ups where you're walking up some at the back whatever the fuck yeah um all right and right now so that could be kind of fun so we're working on that so yes this friday so we've got notion uh since never out now by toxic city c and uh, decipher and smokewell which is the same person uh, but you have to put them separately. Um, and uh, that drops Friday. So, you know, finishing the year strong. This is probably hey. like pushing it a bit to drop music this late in the game. But I yeah. feel, I don't know how you feel about this, but I've had a lot of music up my sleeve for the longest time since I've ever been doing music. I've always just had stuff to sit in there. It just takes ages to get it out. And this will be, I got nothing now. Like, I'm not sitting on shit. I got no verses. I don't even know if I've written a fucking verse this year. Um, well, I guess, yeah, I've only written a couple, actually. I've scribbled some ideas and got some things ideas, moving. But we, yeah. we, have to, we have to uh, get our shit going, the Notion mm-hmm. C album. We have to get that going, and, and we've got our single, double single we're doing with the homie in Vancouver. Um, true, true, so we, true, true. We need to just do that. We have to get our pens moving, mate. Yeah, I was thought about just setting that track off. I just haven't really put time aside to be like, hey, I'm going to go write this right now. It's just like, I don't know. I got to find time mm. to insert the music stuff back into my life again. Yeah. Um, so got to figure that out, but I'm looking forward to that. And I want to just like do those songs and just fucking release them. Like, I don't want to overthink it. Just fucking release it. And maybe we'll do the same Piff style shit where he could record in, in Vancouver because the the dude we're collabing with, I won't say too much yet, but he, he, he's, he owns a brewery. So he's a producer and he raps. So, We'll have one song with me and Notion, one song with the three of us, so we could just do Piff style music videos and then just get. Yeah. And I could ask Rich to edit it, make it cool, um, and we just subtitle them bitches and put them up. Like, could all sounds be cool. Vertical or whatever it doesn't have to be much. Record them on a phone to keep it like the same. So you've got a. I'm about to get the 14. You've got the 13. I'm sure he has a, a good phone. So you know, just keeping it simple and not overcomplicating everything, yeah. and just making the content, just getting stuff out. I don't want to. That's what I want. The goal for us as artists as tmf in 2023 and beyond is to just get shit out i don't want to sit on it anymore i feel like relentless could have done a lot better if we released it in 2017 20 probably 2018 um because by the time you would have got it done after recording in 2017 it would have done better then i think um 
I don't think it sounds dated. I just think we just should have got it the fuck out. And I was just sitting on too much music. I was doing too much at the same time and kept changing my focus. And therefore, yeah. things got delayed. That. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of things yeah. just kept getting pushed and it just wasn't yeah, an optimum. The, shel- the things that got shelved just kind of snowboarded and then you got fucking, you know. I did too many at once. Stuff. Yeah. yeah, three projects at once. But that's why I'm like, I'm cool to do something small like the thing with the homie in uh, West because it's just me and you and him as one dude and it's two songs. Boom, that's it. And, you know. Bam, bam. We got yeah. the first it's beat already done. Nice and easy. Yeah. Like ever, the whole process from you to me and back to you is like a completely seamless and, and stronger in every way. So I don't see anything being put on the shelf to gather any dust anymore. Like, I don't know, after after going through my Beats website and then getting this, stumbling across the, the Since Never beat and finishing that, I was actually thinking of... Um, remastering and re-releasing snares and soul on like you know spotify and everything like just redoing it because yes because kenny yes. beats has that has that album the beat album that we you know called louis and that's just inspired me a lot i've listened to it probably like six times in the last like two weeks i don't really run things over and over and over again i think you're the same kind of yeah. i think you talked about it with like tiff and dan run the same songs a lot like on the spotify reviews we're talking about that shit so yeah I'm, we're not the type of people to do that but i found myself just spinning this louis album which is basically just a production album but it's just it's inspiring man and plus he's a funny cunt because i watch him on youtube so i just need to get my finger out of my ass and that's just like this is the start of it so i feel this is yeah this is a honestly good thing. bro that's so fucking sick and i'm very very happy to hear that that i'm gonna go check that project uh this week um i love that because you and I've had conversation this week where Tiff's been given ideas. She's we've told you in the past, but it wasn't the right time because she told me, and I was like, "Oh, let me tell Nosh um, gotcha. about ideas of where you can put your beats to start to monetize them a little yeah. bit more." Including, you know, there's a few different spots that I, I actually can't remember everything off the top of my head, but even just services like Epidemic Sounds, where the people subscribe, like we subscribe to them for uh, BOS and for um, for high season clearable so music, yeah, it's, and it's like it's like producers submit them and. They, they give an instrumental version and the, the vocal version of the song. The idea is that it's completely no sample. So we could actually, like, I don't think, I think you have to almost make music for it. For so it. it's like, yeah, it's whatever you, on that. Yeah. but I think you are allowed to distribute it on Spotify and YouTube, but you can't, but it, it's like, I don't know if I could just go put Relentless on there. Like, cause the whole gotcha. project, I have clean versions of everything and there's no samples. So like, and I have all the instrumentals. So I could put, everything on there i just don't know if that's exactly the way to go with that but for you you could have a bunch of beats where you take them off your sale for sale site but you can like put them out as if it's your music because apparently the way it works is a lot of people find the music on um epidemic sounds and then they just fucking like it and then they want to go listen to it elsewhere and they can get your spotify numbers up so putting snares and soul like might even be worth remastering and then looking into epidemic sounds and seeing how it works and then working that strategy because that's a whole project of beats that you could put through dsp they're all, they're all really heavy soul samples though like that was kind of the idea of that one okay they might that. not be they're pretty famous soul samples so it's, i just want to put it out if it's just for fun to uh gotcha because honestly like it got some love but like i think now to you know we know how to do everything better so it'll be a better time to, to redo it and if i change something about the beats you know like arrangement wise, make it a little more interesting. Cause I, I've been, it comes on shuffle occasionally on my phone. Cause I have that there. So like, you know, I felt like, fuck it. Why not remaster it? Cause I can make it slap way better than I did in 2017. Mm, okay. I forgot about the sample side of things. So you're yeah. Right. So yeah, just get that out as a project. Just keep putting stuff out. I think this is going to be our shit. Just put it out there. Like mm. it never hurts to have more stuff out there. I feel like, you know, people used to ask me often, like, are you still doing music? I'm like, motherfucker, yeah, I'm still doing music. I got all this shit. But I feel like unless yeah. you're releasing a song every month or something. Every they... couple of weeks or, a, sorry, a couple of months. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> no, even more. You're right, though. Every month, every couple of weeks sometimes because people don't catch all the posts. That's why Relentless Deluxe, I think I was talking about that when that came out, people were like, oh, shit, yeah. you dropped an album. Like, well, I did a year ago and here's five new songs plus yeah. the rest of it. So, like, it was... You know, I think it's dope that we just really focus on releasing stuff. I just, I don't see any value with it sitting on our hard drives. Like, it makes no sense. Yeah, 100%. And, like, I'm not worried before. And the reason why I, what's the word, hesitated a lot. Obviously, Relentless had its own thing because it was such a fucking gargantuan job for you primarily. Like, it was all on your shoulders for such a long time. And 
I didn't pressure you for it because I wasn't. You started on it. And I'm like, oh no, no, we're doing bad habits now. Cool. All right. Cool. Cool. So then you put relentless to the side. Yeah. You do bad habits. You've got your own stuff. You've got clients. You got all. You've got your own shit that you're doing. So then you got to fit it back in. Pause. And the good one. The yeah. way that you the that plus the money side. So then I wanted enough money. I want to work with publicists. I want to do all this shit. And I, you know, it didn't pan out. I couldn't get a publicist. It was too difficult. Mm. Like I, you know, they either don't get back to you or they say they I don't know whatever. Maybe they don't feel it because I, I they want someone with a stature already, and I didn't have a little Wayne feature or fucking a record deal or some shit. So then they won't talk to you. It's one of those things where it's like catch twenty two. It doesn't, you know, yeah. you need a publicist you to get there. Get a look, but you can't get to the how. how so how do you get the you look? Yeah. yeah, if you don't know anybody in the industry, which I, you know, we were in a new country, but even in Australia, I didn't know neither of us knew anybody. So we don't know anyone that's doing it. So that's why I was like, you know, fuck all the industry shit. Fuck it all. Let's just put out dope music and continually mm. do that and do build the podcast and build our, um, both of our uh, uh, platforms and our uh, profiles is what I was looking for. Um, <clears throat> you as a producer and engineer, which is why it's great you're putting out like the house song and you know putting re-releasing snares and soul so people can like hear the work you've done. And then you know we keep talking. I'm talking about this every fucking episode, bro. We're talking about our music all the time, even if it's just five minutes, like mm -hmm. promoting it. But then we get these cool conversations around it, and hopefully it gives people perspective on like how this shit goes, how difficult it is for artists, and the way that we're approaching it, and our thinking, and you know pivots. We're pretty open to new ideas. So now we've done it the same way for so long. So I don't care anymore. I was just always yeah. so stressed. I didn't give a fuck. I just want to put music out. Just do it out. It's cool. Done, done, done. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let people hear because it. Because other cunts don't give a fuck. They put out drivel all the time and in mass quantities. They're kicking our ass and the music's half as shit. That's what I'm saying. So like you we know, could put out. Good, so it's like Yes, that's a good point. I don't want to yeah. like drown people with like, subpar shit i'd rather put out just regular stuff but do it and just don't sit on it we finish our album let's just mix it as we go or some shit so that it's more efficient so by the end of it it's just touch-ups as opposed to starting from this whole scratch shit yeah and it's better now because it's your beats you're gonna have them all in the sessions off the rip there's gonna they're not gonna be messy i like, have to speak to someone else and fucking get stems and like organize and yeah, which is usually fine with the people we've done that before with. But like, yeah, it just cuts out an extra step extra waiting step. for someone else. You know, it's all, all completely, completely in-house. Yeah. Like every single step of the way is between both of us. It's quite amazing what we can, what we both do, how many hats do we wear and shit and how much, how quickly we can get shit out between two cunts. It's honestly crazy. It really is. And it's, it's so much. It's like, it's a little bit daunting all the time. Like I'm like, I just, I feel like I keep forgetting all the steps. There's so many different steps because you got to do, you got to release a lot of things when you put it out. It's not just putting the music out. Cool. So once you got it up from the on the um on the DSPs through the aggregate, the distributor, you got to like genius for the lyrics. You got to upload it SoundCloud, Audio Mac, fucking um, yep. Bandcamp. Like Bandcamp. Different. Thank yep. you. So and Everything. all of those need the ISRC code. They need the UPC. They need tags. They need the the cover art. Blah blah blah. So you got to do all of that shit. You got to do the email oh, blasts. Clicking. You got to do all the promo, lots of clicking. You got to do all the, you know, got to blast it out. I've got a list of DJs that I put, I've got a Dropbox with all the music, clean, instrumentals, d dirty. I didn't ask you to do a clean version of By Toxic City. I'm going to wait till someone asks me for stuff and do it as song by song. As or per request. Like whatever. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I, I didn't want to bother you about it because I was like, I don't know how much people are using the other stuff. So I was like, let's just, if someone asks them, we'll do it. But if they don't ask, I'm not going to yeah, do it. Yeah. It's not worth the amount Wait, of time yet. Yeah, I, I just thought that was a bit easier. But if you don't mind, I'll holler at you and be like, hey, man, this radio station just needs a, a clean. I don't know. Because I'll ask them what they want. I'll be like, I'm going to make it per request. Do you want, you know, how many songs are you going to play? You're going to play two songs. You're just going to play the one. Tell me which one. I don't give a fuck. Like, play anything yeah. you like. It all promotes. I don't really care about a single and such. We're going to do videos um, for, for some joints. But, um, Anyway, yeah, this is so many steps and it's a little daunting because we don't release it a, a, enough. Uh, when I did Relentless Deluxe, I just kept forgetting stuff and I remember days later, like, oh, fuck, I didn't do that. Oh, uh, fucking hell, eh? Boom, boom, boom. It's like I need a checklist or something to, to release, but, you know, I'm not complaining. It's just, it's, it's a lot, but you yeah, should just, just make a note. We'll write the steps down because, like, I was thinking the same thing. Like, you know, when I was put up the, the song earlier today, uh, you know, just like, you know, put it on the two different things that, just the different, uh, you know, SoundCloud, Bandcamp, make the 
make the cover and then I got to make the video version and stuff. It's just, you know, there's only two pla- two places I put it up and it took me a little bit to get all that together. So it's like, yeah, it's a, it's a whole tedious process. There's way more back end. Of course. Way it's more. In the art. It's, it's a ton. It's huge. It's such a thing. But like, you know what? The more we release stuff, the smoother that'll get. So yeah, I like that idea. I'll make a note and I'll just put, all right, release steps. So boom, boom, boom. Make sure you get a link. I've got documents for already for Bi- Biotoxy City as we go because it's a collab project. I took... Yeah. I got Dylan to send me his lyrics and I, I put together the document as we went this time. So I got all the lyrics up front because when you submit them, you got to put the lyrics in. Then I already have it for Genius because Genius is great for um, SEO. So I put everything on Genius. True. It's really good. Then there's this other one, which I need, I might get Dan to do it. It's this thing called Music X Match. And you know how on Instagram stories, when you use it in stories and there's like the lyrics come up, it's that side. Yep. It's how you get the ah, lyrics up cool. there. But Love that. there's an app and you got to, tap when as to, to match the lyrics physically you can do it line by oh. line on the computer but on the app i have it right here to remind me i just couldn't be fucked. you have to kind of order you have to automate it when you it- have to do it but you got to. and i'm like i have so many songs like i i don't know if i'm going to be able to do it i tried and i'm like it's just so fucking much bro like it's so so much oh it's logged yeah, in that- Sounds like a waste of time for sure. For sure, well, to do not a waste of time. Or... It's something that takes way too long for the effort that it's going to get you. Yeah, yeah, it's super annoying, bro. So anyway, there's a lot to do with the music stuff, but I'm excited to um, continue. How's, you... How's your weed drink going, mate? Yeah, it's good. I feel like it was not. It was like a low fill. I think. Um, so That's it wasn't beauty. as carbonated, but the flavor, strawberry watermelon, was great. How's yours? Fuck yeah! Oh, it's almost gone, mate. It's, it's honestly really good. It's starting to get a little tingly. Okay. The old cranberry. It doesn't taste like ginger um, at all. Uh, it says cranberry ginger ale, so I guess it's kind of like, you know, ginger ale doesn't taste like ginger, really. But yeah, man, no. it's fucking good, good cranberry juice. I'm kind of high. So. Cool. There you go. It's going to kick in nice. We'll see how sloppy you get if you get uh, sea level slops. You know? Sea level slops. I'll probably smoke yeah. a joint as well, so we'll see how that goes too. I'll get, a bit of, I'll, get, I'll get stoned inside and out. There you go. The whole uh, well, in both ways, whatever it is. Anyway, I like it. You know what I mean? I like it. I like it. I like it. I like your face. All right, what else we got? So, Scissor dropped her album uh, this weekend, um, which was highly anticipated. Anticipated. Thank you. Uh, it's called SOS. Um, <clears throat> you did not listen to it. Are you... No, I saw, I saw lots about it. Okay, people were posting in like Happy Scissor Day. Yeah. So, Are you a fan? It... Not much. Okay. So I am a fan now. Back in the day, I, I didn't like any of her shit and I didn't understand why people liked her, like her old stuff. Before Control, that album called Control was pretty cool. That was pretty fire. But yeah, the that. older shit was like, I just did, I just couldn't connect with it. I just didn't understand it. Like when I was going to Afropunk 2017, 18 and 19, like she played at one of them. I don't think I saw her, but she was playing on them and um, cunts lost their fucking mind. And I didn't wow. understand the hype. So over time, she has a fantastic voice. She looks great. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, Thanks. she she does her thing. So this album, bro, is fucking weird. There's like, okay, I was ready to love it. I was ready. I was like excited about. It. I'm gonna pull it up on Spotify real quick right now because there's 800 Please. trillion songs on it. That's the thing. Um, I was really surprised at the length of the album. Um, how, how many for, songs? How many minutes? I'm gonna tell you right now. Oh, Here it is. Yes. Oh shit! I didn't mean to play it. Um, 23 songs. And, uh, okay, that's not an hour. More no, than an does, hour. Doesn't it say? I thought it said. I thought it used to say like how long the the thing is. You should say 23 songs, one hour, blah, blah, blah. So it's it's pretty long. It's got to be at least an hour then for that. Um, I don't even know. Did I make it all the way through? I thought I maybe I didn't. Maybe. It's truth. I'm looking at the. I'm so confused then because what I was what was I listening to? This the order here is not what I listened to, so I'm gonna have to check what I did then. But it's like some of it is like R and B, typical what you would expect, and some of it is like fucking like Sarah McLaughlin, like full on white girl, <laughs> white girl pop. As in, like, what the what? fuck am I listening to? Like, I could is it the, believe- the beat? Or the what? Yeah. how she's singing, or what she's singing? It's the the beat. beat. It sounds like Fox FM from 2002. Jesus Christ. Like, like when I say that, that's a mainstream radio station in Australia, in Melbourne. Um, What's the equivalent in uh, in Toronto here? Or the, like, you know. The Edge. 
the edge yeah yeah or cool. like um i don't actually know <laughs> i don't listen to the radio so q103 the the oh, that's like a, that's an old school rock anyway it doesn't matter whatever fair but enough mainstream yeah like, isn't there always a like kiss fm places usually so like some shit like mm-hmm. that it's just i don't know man we even t- we we're just both like what in the fuck is this there's a song with um someone named Phoebe Bridges, and I'm pretty sure that's just like a actually I should just double check I have it right here, like um you know the type of artist that I'm talking about, like someone that makes the type of like it's like you know just acoustic guitar with no thing, but it's not like soulful really. It's like right yeah Phoebe Bridges E R S. Let me see if it's uh the way I'm like yeah some white girl with 10 million monthly listeners. That it's, truth. it's just like so I, I just. I don't know, man. I don't get it. I, I really confused by that. And okay, and check this out. Um, twenty eighteen, I tweeted. Um, I did. It must be right after the Grammys. Which when's the Grammys? January or something? Every year. So it'll be January twenty eighteen, nearly five years ago. I put yep. Scissor is overrated. Um, uh, four 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 is better than Damn. Um, and a bunch of just takes on the Grammy stuff. Bruno was dope, but he didn't deserve album of the year and something else. And I was like, Grammys, glad I didn't watch. And then someone was <laughs> like, You look dumb. Responded to me the, with one someone with one follower yesterday. Yesterday? Yeah. Or Friday. Yesterday or Friday. Was like, Yeah, you look dumb. You are like, so dumb. I'm like, <laughs> You are really, really dumb. Like that. Basically. I know, I know what you're talking years. about. Yeah, 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 cool. yeah. So it's like, Why would you go? I just blocked them and deleted my original tweet because I was like, I guess sure, but I was like, oh, maybe Scissors got like, like barb level stands that are coming out. So it's like, mm-hmm. like you said, you're seeing people like, you know, fucking jack off over it because they do love her. Like she's got this real passionate, obsessive, yeah. obsessive is a good word for it. I'm like, I don't know, man. Like, it's it's weird to me that that's the album that she delivered and i felt like i didn't connect with any of the songs again i mean maybe she's just not for me and like i want her to be but she's not it's just i don't know i'd be curious to hear what you think but like it wasn't like one song was the fucking white girl acoustic folk from the 90s or 2000s like there was a bunch and the melodies weren't super r&b ish like her voice is obviously because she can sing her ass off but yeah, I'm not saying this in a hate away because, like I said, I wanted to like this fucking project, and I think this is great. It was just very disarming, and I don't understand it. Like I don't, I don't know what wow. she was going for. Not that you know, she can, she's a creative. She can do what the fuck she wants, but it's not what I expected. And maybe it's like I said that to Tiff, and she was like, "Well, maybe she did it because you know Beyonce did a house album, and like Drake did a house album, so she can do what she wants." Right. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to what to think, man. Like I haven't really seen any other. Um, reviews of it yet have you huh. no nah, just people were uh posting about that it's out and they was really you know they were responding with uh well posting it with fire emojis and love love heart faces and stuff like that love heart eye faces because they just love her off so yeah no no actual reviews internet well look do you know what i looked for the word oh there's a song called snooze okay um because there's scissor you could search for her it says scissor scissor snooze and then scissor album i thought snooze maybe people saying it was boring um but yeah it seems like i don't know man i just uh i don't know i don't know there's some people are saying it's toxic uh, uh, yeah she's browsing all the genres she wanted to dabble on in this album there's like a funny meme like I don't know. Oh, there's someone's like Bob's been streaming and supporting Scissors album, and her fans are dragging Nikki. So there you go. So they're probably just as toxic as Nikki's one. Uh, Nikki's fans, who are easily the most toxic fan base. Like you just don't even uh, try and say anything. It's terrifying. Um, oh my god. Uh, I don't, I don't get know. that shit, that obsessive fan base shit. They go on like go on Gurks people online because they said one thing. That seems like a bunch of sad, uh, sad kids. Hmm. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's, it's weird. weird to me. So I don't know, man. I guess I'm gonna have to. Oh, there you go. Someone's like listening to Scissor album after already hearing half the songs two summers ago on TikTok because there's a bunch of them. I'm like, I've heard this before. So oh, yeah, hmm. maybe she just put a whole bunch of stuff um, together, and it seemed did seem pretty toxic. Someone's like, to, I'm in a happy relationship. That's probably why Scissor's new album didn't hit for me. So. Uh. I don't know. <laughs> 
I've definitely said this to somebody um, mm. that I always thought her music was like insecure relationship R and B. Insecure relationship R and B. Who said that? You did. Yeah, I was talking to some one, and I was just like, I didn't like, uh, you know, because it was on at the house, and I was just like, ah, oh, man, see, I can't listen to this. Like, subject matter is so depressing, and kind of like, you know, it's just bad to listen to. Just you know, hmm. kind of subject I mean, matter is just not good to hear all the time. Like, just hearing. So about you think it's like negative because she's? Shit. I think it's negative to listen to all the time. People obsess about that kind of shit. Mm. That's interesting. I mean, people are also going through that kind of shit, but then they're like misery loves company kind of thing. Right. So it's like making them continue instead of like processing yeah. it and getting past it. It's it's positive music. It's, it's keeping positive. you in it. Huh. It keeps you in it. Exactly right. That's what I think about it because I have seen people try to defend it like it's great, but it really genuinely doesn't help. And like, I, I listened to a lot of like, um, like soulful hip hop and on the playlist on, on Spotify and stuff. And they have... Uh, those playlists have like it's actual pure hip hop to the actual definition, and uh, a lot of the the conscious hip hop rather, and that shit's literally positive stuff about you know just being a good cunt, like eating healthy, like even to the dead press stuff. There's a lot of newer MCs, but like um, just yeah, the the positive subject matter and the positive uh, just the way it's written is it's really important. So I hate that kind of music because it's just keeps you trapped and if you want to be if you want to dwell and be sad about shit that's been fucked up and even if you're not fucked up and you listen to that shit and you learn the words and you sing it a lot you're singing about heartache and really bad domestic issues and you i feel like that's sub like unconsciously attracting that to people like and that's kind of bad i think that's genuinely a weapon like that's not a good not good thing if you're hearing that shit all the time and it makes you depressed and shit you're going to attract that in your life and i think that's a bad thing it's part of your diet your audio diet it's part of your you know, you, the way your timeline is on your socials, the way you eat your food, the way you listen to your music, it's all part of your diet. You need to really be, you know, aware of that. And people are not. And it's just a, a, it's incredible. People listen to fucking, you know, really bad rap about, you know, fucking bitches at like 9 a.m. in the morning. And they're like, you know, I'm in the trap, all that kind of stuff. And, the, you know, at 8 o'clock in the morning on the tram or the train going to work, it's just not positive, man. I don't see the... The, the benefits from that at all and people don't realize that it's actually probably fucking them up that's my hmm. take i i agree with that i think it's been like that for a long time and yeah it's uh it's it's yeah it's not helping people and it's like in a world where all the news is negative and everything around us is negative then the music you're listening to yeah. is everything um, it's, like it's a key part music is so important for our bodies like yeah like we genuinely re receive music in a in a really deep way that we usually don't even observe half the time like ever since i've been meditating a little more and getting into um just you know deeper parts of deeper kinds of meditations and stuff like that like i've um i don't know i just feel like music is more important i've been listening to like set like audio recordings of the himalayan sound bowls and shit like that to kind of help me you know if i don't want to sit there in silence for 20 minutes and meditate and breathe i'll listen to uh you know those the bowl things and it's just a different kind of relaxation it's like a mental shower dog it's fucking yeah. fire yeah that's just so like yeah. Interesting. yeah and since I've, since I've been doing that like i'm finding more of a relationship with my body and the music that i'm listening to so i always choose positive subject matter if i'm going to listen to lyrics and if it's just music then i've got to make sure it's inspirational and, and usually in a um, major key so it's happier music so it doesn't if it's in a, a minor um Key, then it's usually a little sadder and that can get your thoughts on that, that sadder frequency and that's what i try to avoid so i think it's more important it goes deeper than we realize and i've been like dipping my toes into it hmm. i fuck with that that's uh that's really dope and it's a great like piece advice for people listening to <clears throat> listening to yeah, all that it's more of a thing of like just be mindful of what you're listening to and putting into your body and your music is really important um hmm. because it can be more influential than you realize so we yeah, know i don't someone. know uh, without yeah. saying names you know what i'm talking about we know someone who let that type of music overwhelm them they became a negative little anger ball of, of uh you know what i'm talking about the young man uh the who was someone who was uh, you met through me he was the younger brother of uh of another dude and uh he took had a large diet uh, this was probably and you don't talk to them anymore because of this um and he was listening to a lot of trap music and it sort of really changed his sort of behavior and um, he just became really angry. 
you were you were a call late. I don't want to put him on blast. Yeah, right. yeah, fair enough. No, no, it's cool. Um, That's crazy though. Yeah, so um, you're not on. Actually, if I just text you. Yeah, yeah do yeah. that. Um, but yeah, so like it's you know we've seen it. Um, oh live. shit! Yeah. Yeah. So wow. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to put on blast. But you know what I'm saying? Like that affected him, and you. That was the first time you're like, man, this guy listened to all this fucking shit, and he's. Uh, you Turned know. him into a like thug kind of like really and he's not to be, a thug. He's straight yeah. home. Yeah, his Came parents good, are the nicest. Home. Yeah, man, his yeah. parents are lovely. Like they're yeah. so fucking nice. Like I knew them. They were really good to me. Like you know, they're kind of what I consider them as like family, um, to a degree. And uh, to hear up? that was pretty sad. So you know, we've seen it before. Someone said here on Twitter though about what you just said. They said Scissors album is truly a self-aware and emotionally available masterpiece. It listens like a series of therapy sessions. She processes her shadow self and the ugly emotions. What so up? I'm like, you... That can be healthy for some people, but also, if you're healthy, it can bring you into a shit spot. That's it. And I think some people maybe like think that's cool or whatever, but they, they are, like you said, they aren't in the place to be able to process that information um, and... and actually you know they, they just internalize it more and kind of dwell in it they don't know how to take that and you know fix themselves so it's sort of like yeah man it's interesting it's interesting it's an interesting it's a crazy topic situation isn't it? yeah it's super it's super fascinating i'd love to hear other takes on it because i guess i haven't thought about it too much and i want to hear more of what people think of the project because i only gave it one listen whilst we were driving and talking sometimes we weren't talking in this yeah yeah but, I'm going to listen to it probably all week because there's nothing else I'm super excited about. Um, just to see if it's, if I like it, I'll give it a few chances because I do like her. Yeah. Like normally if I, if I, if I didn't fuck with an artist that much, I would have done that listen. I'd be like, yeah, that's it. I'm not going back, but I'll give it a crank. I'll probably like listen to it while I have dinner after this. And I'll just be like, if you got any thoughts, I, I might smoke to it. Yeah. Like, yeah, I will. I will. I think you'll you know, trip I'll out. Smoke it now after having this fucking. Yeah. You probably so see how this goes. eh? <laughs> Yeah, I'll be curious to see how that goes. But anyway, so there was that. So that's our thoughts on the scissor thing. We're no like experts, so no hate at all, just you know, thoughts. Um, all right, what else do we want to talk about here? We've got a bunch of different stuff. Maybe we can go a quick bunch of news things. Um Absol was dropping a single with Jay. Oh, we talked about that because uh they had he chose the dinner with Jay Z. So the yeah, single I've, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the single's coming soon and they released a track list from the album. So maybe the album is this coming Friday, actually. Um which got some cool, you know, it's got some great uh, guests on it. So the album is called Herbert, which is a funny name. Herbert. Herbert. That's his, that's his real name. His name's Herbert? Oh, that's yeah. amazing. That's so good. Um, I love funny, ridiculous names for rappers. It's a classic name. It's like, you know. It's a uh, an obsolete British name is what we call it. And that's what uh, our dog wow. is named after. Wow, it. what a fucking name. That's what obsolete. Jonathan Emil says. A, is that a category name? Is that a category of names? That's what Jonathan Emil calls him. Shouts to Johnny. So he wow. calls them that because that's what Jamaicans use for everything. So all Jamaica, Clarence, <laughs> Earl. Um, I met I met a guy called Norbit like a month or two ago. Jamaican yeah, dude guy. That, uh, <coughs> the dude that plays drums for uh, her. Yep. His name's Clarington. Clarington? Love it. Um, I yep. met, sorry, I didn't Love meet it. Norbit. That's Tiff's mum's friend's name. I met Dudley. Oh, Dudley? Come on. I'm that's, not joking. I, that's from a, t that's a TV show cartoon yes. fucking name. This, that's a fucking it's real amazing. Kind of name. Damn, dog. It's obsolete British name. So that's what that was all about. I think it's fucking hilarious. Love that. So shouts to Obsolete. That's maybe a good podcast. You know what thing. we should do? We should ask we all this. the listeners. Totally did. That'll be the clip too. Ask all the listeners, uh, YouTube, on all the podcast mediums. Just chuck it in the comments. What's your favorite obsolete British name? Give us the, uh, your funniest one or your favorite one. Either one, either one, will, they'll be piss funny to us. So I'm here drop a it. comment and let us know. That's awesome. That's so good. And you meet someone called that. Oh, it's money, money. What's the time mark on that? Uh, the time mark is four, four, 44. I'm gonna write that at the top. 44, Beautiful. 44 minutes. Extra. I'll find that. You're a man. Beautiful. Love when we get that. I said you're a man. You're the man. All right. Yes, I am a man. You yes, are a man. I have a cock. You do, and it's. I won't go there. All right. The yep. um, everyone was doing those um, AI lenser lenser photos. Did we talk about that Babylon last week? Things. We did. You did some. Oh, we talked about it last week. Okay, sick. Don't have to worry about. It. Cool. Yeah, because yours were beautiful. We had an absolute cackle. I lost my mind because you oh, you had forget. you had you posted like you know ten, and yes. then there was like you know stacks more that you didn't. Because I was post. showing you the screen. And you were yes. showing us on your on your phone, and we were dying laughing because you just looked ever so gallant. Well then, well then, and handsome. 
Thank you very much. I appreciate you. Yeah. It's uh, a lot you. of people are posting them now. So, okay, cool. Well, then we can move on. That's great. Uh, Brittany Griner, the WNBA player oh who goodness. was in jail in uh, Russia for bringing weed over. Uh, yep. She was released in, in from jail in exchange for this guy named like Victor Bout, and he's apparently the world's most dangerous arms dealer. So they gave yep. a, a literal terrorist, a guy that was selling arms to crazy people for, in exchange for a WNBA player. People, like some people are happy, some people are pissed. It was an interesting yep. choice. Every, the internet's taking the piss. They, they just think America's a bunch of dumb cunts even more. They're like you know, um, Putin rinsed Biden kind of thing. I saw like a. I'll send you the the post. It's actually hilarious, but um, yeah, there's a, the internet is going nuts over that. They're thinking like the US is a bunch of pussies. They're like, the US did a uh, you know a PR stunt to get a fucking you know kind of over the hill basketballer back, and then Russia got like one of the most dangerous men on their roster back. It's like, how does that even like how do you even weigh that up? I feel like there might be something else going on. Like, yeah, that's fucking crazy, dude. There definitely has to be something else to that story because that's like too off. It's too yeah. off. It doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. Um. So I'm not sure. But I'm glad she's safe. That. But it also seems like there's a little more repercussions down the line for this from this little move here. Yeah. So it's gonna be interesting to see how that plays out, like politically and shit. But I know. it's only been a couple of days. So that that was an interesting update. Uh, what else we got? Um, we talked about that. The Lupe Fiasco MIT lecture. What's the vibes? Yeah, so basically, I just came across it on YouTube. It's it's like three days old. Um, oh no, three days, or maybe it's a week old. I forget the number of the date. Anyway, so Lupe has been teaching at MIT. It's a rap um, theory and practice lecture, and he just literally breaks down the structure of rapping and like you know how to write raps and how to practice yeah so I, I watched like literally two minutes today and i'm like i need need to sit down and concentrate because he literally asks you to do exercises and i actually want to oh. do it like i'm in the in the lecture and i think it's uh it's going to be amazing it's for like an hour and an hour and 10 minutes some of like that but yeah i'm keen as fuck on that one so hour and 21 drop, hour and 21 there you go so we should we should drop um we should drop the link in the description so the folks I can, love, uh, I can do that yeah yeah. Pull that back right. a smidge. Pause. Yeah. That's the. Well, do you want me to press play? I wasn't playing it. No, no, just like pull it back so the camera. Oh, can pull it back from here. Sorry, I thought you meant that. Yeah. So that's the um, that's the the lecture. He's actually there. It's got it shows the slides and shit. So yeah. all right, that's fucking dope, man. Shout out to Lupe. What a mad cunt, right? Yeah, fucking good for him. Um, beautiful. Love to see it. Uh, what else? Liver King drama. So we never really talked about this dude before, and I knew knew who he was. I, I, I didn't know who he was until he got caught doing the shit. So I had to backtrack and then fill it in. So I don't really know pause. too much about the cunt. Yeah, pause, gotcha, yeah. gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So one, all I know is this dude who talks about um, ancestral living, and he walks around. He's jacked to fucking shit, and he walks around with no shirt on. And looks like Rand got... Randy Savage. Much yeah, man, Randy like Savage a Viking. Like that. <clears throat> yeah, like a massive, Viking. like. Absolutely, like jacked and ripped. Like he's massive and like fucking full abs, like cut everywhere. It's insane. So he yeah. says that he lives by these. Pause, um, pause, 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 pause. Thank you. He just in case. Just in case he um, he's been going on a lot of podcasts and he's you know got a big following. He's got a full team behind him. He's come you know made a bunch of money. He was uh, listened to a podcast. His apology podcast today. So I got a bit more information because I've never heard him on a normal podcast. I've only heard the apology because it didn't particularly interest me. So like he's preaching these nine ancestral tenants and he eats a lot of raw meat. So I was always showing him eating, you know, livers and testicles and like all sorts of animal meats raw. And that's, he's like, that's how I get jacked. That's how so all rich. of this is raw. I go work out twice a day, but I'm <laughs> like, I'm, uh, you know, um, that's, that's what I do. People are asking, like, are you taking any juice? And he's like, nah, like this shit is just from the diet and working out. So he's been around, I believe, like a year and a half, and he really got bigger recently. And I think he didn't expect to be so big. And then this dude who was like a trainer, I guess, or a doctor or some sort of thing, leaked an email between them. And the email uh, fully laid out from Liver King, his name's Brian Johnson. And he fully laid out his entire steroid routine, like how much he takes. Jesus he takes uh, human growth, HGH or 
hormone replacement, one of the two I forgot, and testosterone. And it uh, costs about 12K US a month from what he, uh, how much he, he takes. So then Fuck that came rack. out. Exactly. So he denied it multiple, multiple times. Every Everyone always asked him. So then that email came out and then he had no choice and he did like an apology video. Be like, I lied to you. He took um, ownership over it. Um, <clears throat> people seem pretty pissed because he has a supplement company and they think he was lying to get people to buy his supplements. But he was like, because mm-hmm. um, they think that if they take the supplements and then eat liver and shit, then they'll look like him, which is not possible. Because it's just, it's too, you can't possibly do it. Everyone was saying all these people like Rogan and everyone just like, this is not, like, I'll put my life on it. He's taking steroids. It's absolutely really? no way. Wow. So he, I guess they, those kind of blokes know that's crazy. Mm. I was talking to our friend Scotty. He uh, saw him recently and he um, was saying that when he was at the gym, nothing to do with this. He was just saying at the gym when he used to go heavy back in the day, he, his friend was on roids. So he said, you'd be able to look at a guy, see that guy, and you can tell by the way their body looks and the exercises they're doing. Go, that guy's on blah, 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 some medical name of, of the gym. Wow. And that guy's on it. that, that guy's on that, and this one too. This guy's on, yeah, and they could just look around the gym and tell. I was like, fuck, man, I guess. Wow. <clears throat> I was never familiar with any, any of that type of stuff. Yeah, fuck um, that. So it's kind of crazy. But uh, yeah, so he admitted it, and he went on Flagrant, Andrew, Andrew Short's podcast um, this week and uh that was the first one where he admitted it all and explained the whole story why he did it you know he's saying he convinced himself that um <clears throat> it was the right thing to do and it was helping people and he he said he was bullied as a kid and shit and always sort of felt worthless and stuff and there's a lot of people that um uh commit suicide or try attempt suicide every day and it's pretty obscene numbers and he's like one you know people are hurting and one way to help fix that is his ancestral tenant so we thought if he created this character this liver king character that's like over the top and like um fucking eats raw liver and all this crazy shit's gonna get attention just like andrew tate did i guess type of thing yeah. and, and um you know help kids that was his, what he was saying and it's you know then he explained that him and his wife they owned all these dental things they made money from that and they had a supplement business already it's like pre-liver king they already had it so mm. uh, it was uh, it was interesting he, he seems like a decent enough dude and he seems to mean it andrew schultz was like i believe you i I think you mean it so i don't think he was sucking him off or anything like trying to just be cool um it was interesting it was interesting i I don't know if uh, maybe some people been following him think he's funny i don't know it's i don't really get into all that type of stuff but um anyway that happens that's crazy as fuck eh? pretty crazy so you know basically the internet's always going to catch you it's how that works um speaking of gotcha so Ye put out a song and i think he got taken down from uh instagram just a song and at the start and the end he had different snippets from his uh, alex jones interview um yeah the the beat was pretty cool the raps i don't even really remember just like one verse and like a soul sample um sounded kind of like his donda shit yeah but it got taken down so now you know, banned from Twitter. They took that down. Um, and now the latest one, apparently, he, I don't know if he went on yet, but he's going on this guy called Aiden Ross, um, who's a Twitch streamer, one of the bigger ones. So he apparently he's going on this dude's shit. But this guy doesn't know anything about anything, like as far oh. as politics. I don't know why he's going on this guy's one because he won't even better have a good conversation because this guy won't know what's up. But I don't know what's happening with Ye, bro. It's like, it's interesting. Like he, he that Milo Yiannopoulos dude, he fired him for right. his campaign. Yeah. Uh, presidential campaign apparently milo said that kanye tried to have gay sex with him so i mean like i feel like he's just surrounding himself with like fucktards and not doing himself any favors by continually talking about this stuff i mean like i said some of it probably comes from a good place but he just keeps even if he's trolling and keeps doing stuff it's just not whatever the way he's doing it's not doing himself any favors and i I don't I don't know if he's going to come back. I don't know if they're ever going to get Kanye music again because who's going to work with him? I don't think they're ever going to get... like I, This might be stock X. This might be over for the Yeezys for me. Like I'm still wearing them, but obviously not going to stop. Like, I don't give a fuck because it doesn't represent anti-Semitism because I'm not anti-Semite. I have no problem. Even though we talked about it last time, most Jews are not Semites on the historical definition of the word. So I'm not anti-anybody. I fuck with everyone, so I don't want anyone... To, I, I think not enough people know the shoes or the clothes to be able to comment because they're all pretty plain. They don't have like yeah, the branding on them. Good. Thank fuck. So it makes it easy. And where I live, most people won't have a clue. So it's okay. Got to keep it low key like an OG. You know what I'm saying? I don't know the fucking vibes. 
So that's what's up with Yay. Uh, tell me about the World Cup updates. I know this is a Dan thing. Oh yeah, Dan is on the uh, on his way to like a pre Christmas uh, vacay with his girl. Well, I guess it's a vacay, but he's still working. He says so. All right, but uh, safe flight, Uncle Dan. Um, safe as. Tell us about the World Cup because Dan is not. Well, on Saturday, um, England played France. Uh, Morocco played uh, for Portugal. Um, there was actually a lot of good games. So yeah, uh, a couple of big upsets. Brazil got knocked out by Croatia um, in penalty kicks. And then Argentina beat Netherlands, penalty kicks. And then Morocco beat Portugal 1-0, which is honestly insane because Portugal's got uh, you yeah, know the mad, the mad cunt on it. And uh, Excuse Arthur. my... Oh. Ronaldo. Cristiano Ronaldo's Portuguese? Yeah. Is it Christian or Cristiano? I Christian. Christian, yeah, I don't know. Cristiano. I don't okay. know. Okay. Well, I know that I know I know his face too. He's one of the only soccer players I know. I learned what Messi looked like like yesterday and I was like, ah, oh, that's yeah. It's not what I thought. <laughs> Dude. I'm f- mad late on that too. That's so funny you mentioned that. Looks like a Greek, like a Greek. Where's he from? Um Argentina. Oh, okay. He looks like Greek or something. Like it's not Yeah, he's got like a ginger beard and brown hair. Like, yeah, it's like, like, like a, it's like which one are you dying, bro? But he's, I don't think he is. But yeah, yeah. I, I didn't realize he was so short. I knew what he looked like from years ago, but I was super late on it. You are actually hilariously late. But yeah, I've like seen literally this of, week. I've seen lots of clips from him. He's like phenomenal. I just didn't realize he was so short. So I found it comical to watch the uh the Argentina game the day before. So yeah, that was hilarious because uh that was super tight too fucking crazy 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 game some of the best world cup action i've ever seen it was genuinely intense cool. i have no investment in either either of the teams and it was just actually like fucking on edge of your seat watching yeah cool. some of them are like a big, a big wank for like you know literally one of the games like there's nothing for like 80 minutes and then in the last 10 it was the most insane heart-wrenching shit you've ever seen the fans in the crowd are just absolutely in the stands i just like beside themselves like the the emotions these cunts go through is so high and low i really genuinely feel for them and it's it's hilarious and sad and some cunts are crying you know what i mean like it's wild cunts love this shit bro so yeah it's kind of fun to see those intense games um but the main one that i want i watched on on uh on saturday was uh england and france and france won the world cup last time and Mm. you know france uh, that was another one of those games where it kind of didn't have a score for a while and then it was like back and forth back and forth and so france and he went ended up taking that one so um the next big game is like argentina croatia on tuesday um, france and morocco on wednesday and then uh that's going to be stupidity so we should probably going to start tuning in a little more often because i don't watch every game all of the game but lately i've just been tuning into a lot lot bigger chunks of it okay that's cool it's getting more it's getting more exciting i like that Okay, great summary. Uh, I enjoy because we have a group chat with Dan and uh, you and Dan are always talking about it. So it's yeah. like I, I get the updates from there. Not that I care, but like, I like the, I like that you see it though because then you at least know what the fuck's going on. So like I, I read know. it all. I don't I don't participate typically, but like mm. I I make sure I stay up on it to um just to understand what's going on. So now when you're talking about, I'm like oh yeah, I remember you guys saying that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a little bunch of scallywag behavior. It's pretty good though. Do enjoy it. Sports, man. Um, yeah, man. All right, two other things we have on the list. Uh, I don't know if you have to look this up, but apparently NBA Youngboy and Jeff Bezos have some sort of a deal. I actually do recall hearing about that. Um, I wonder what that could be. I, maybe I could guess in the meantime. Because Bezos isn't putting out music, so it can't be a record deal. Maybe it's like some sort of like merch deal or something. I don't know. Yeah, that's... Uh, oh. like, or, or like... Actually, I don't know. Like, yeah, like distribution or whatever, selling something, a product for... Here we go. Plans to deal with Amazon. Oh, my God. It's a YouTube video, for fuck's Uh, sake. Okay. Here we go. Uh, Oh, for a talk show. So, Lan's a deal with... On Prime. Jeff for a talk show called, yeah, on Amazon radio show ahead of of a new album. So, he's partnered with Amazon to launch his own radio show. And, uh, yeah, because he's... We got Amazon Music, so maybe it's a podcast. They're calling it's it a, a radio talk show. show. A talk show, yeah. I Video talk show? It, uh... mm, probably. Why wouldn't they film it? Because then that would be a talk show. But I'm like, how can it be a, an um, on Amazon Radio if it's if it's a video talk show? Maybe it's a podcast that they film. That's that's what I mean. It'd be that's normal. 
that means it's yeah, just I guess podcast. So, yeah. That's normal. Yeah. Okay. Well, they're calling it, I guess, it's this, yeah. But yeah, that's interesting as fuck because I didn't think he would be. That's weird, man. That was just weird news. I mean, get on him and shit. Fuck. But then this, you... I saw some fucking links. Uh, there's this old other rapper that was like talking mad shit about him saying he's got herpes or something like that. And there's a bunch of clips of, you know, NBA Youngboy rapping about or singing about. I saw that. How he's got it. It's so funny. And that guy has dissed him so heavy, calling him Bumpy Dick. It is the funniest thing. I laughed so hard, bro. I spat my cup of tea out in the morning. It was ridiculous. That guy is so funny who's giving him shit. And he's like, there's so many videos of it. It made me laugh so much, man. Bumpy Dick is hilarious. (laughs) Oh, Bumpy Dick. Oh, dude, it's so (laughs) fucking amazing. Lost it. I, I'm not surprised because he's got like 11 children, I think, and he's like 20, 21 or 22. Like, got to keep it in the. Uh, and he even he even sings about who he got it from in in the lyrics of his songs. He puts them on Blizzy Blast. I, have you ever heard a full song from him? Because I have not. No, just the snippets in the posts that I've seen. I, I think I think uh, he's annoying. I've seen a bunch of people um, post memes like you know, it's like you know NBA young boy walks around the house like and then they have some video of someone like stomping the lift the floor like they're fucking like mm. an angry person like they always say he's just like an angry you know degenerate cunt and i always give him right. shit he seems, he's just an angry young man hmm. he seems like a waste man to be honest like yeah to be blunt with that he i saw a video of like like i think he does um what do you call it like fucking future style shit like it's not rapping rapping it's like it's just auto-tune singing yeah because there was a video of like NBA, like, I don't know, like LeBron and them warming up to it and like three or four of them. singing it. Yeah. Or dancing. Yeah, that's ridiculous. You saw that one? Yeah. Yeah. It's called called White something, White Lines or White Line. Okay. I was like, (laughs) okay, like y'all like know the music like that. Like, I don't know where he's doing the dances to it as well because it was in the video. I don't know. They love it. Okay. I don't know, man. Maybe we're just too old for this shit. Like, it's just not for us. I don't even think Dan's into that, though, and he's probably the right age, so... Yeah. It could dancing. even be the cunt's younger than Dan. It could even be aimed at 15-year-olds or something. Like, I don't know. I just oh. can't... I can't see anything about wanting to listen to him. There's nothing I could try. Maybe he's got some catchy shit. I don't know. Probably does. I imagine he's successful, so, like... Yeah. Anyway, not for us. So, there's that. And the last thing, to wrap it up on a super funny note, uh, Oris, your tortoise... Oh Who's yeah, having some dramas. Well, basically, yeah, my little muffin sauce. Uh, I have a just for the kids that don't know. I have an eight-year-old pet uh, Herman's tortoise, and basically, he's a, you know he's a, he's a good cunt. I feed him really good stuff. I feed him natural as possible, and in the last little while, he hasn't taken a shit. Right, so you know, I, I basically think he's backed up. And I spoke to a vet online a couple of days ago. And they recommended to get some food grade mineral oil and like put it in his food. So as I was searching Amazon, I just typed in, you know, mineral oil, food grade, whatever. Click the first thing I saw that would come tomorrow. And uh, so I ended up, I I bought the the wrong thing too quick. And then uh, I guess what it was, see if easy. Um, So it was mineral oil. So it's probably got something to do with body things, something to do with uh, putting in the bomb. I imagine that's correct. So basically, I, it, it ended up being a a fucking human fleet brand mineral oil enema kit. I searched um, food grade mineral mineral oil, and that came up. But I didn't realize it was the wrong thing till it rocked up. And I spoke to a Filipino lady on the Amazon customer service, and she found it absolutely hilarious. And uh, she just, you know, they gave me a refund that was absolutely hilarious. So basically, um, they gave me a human bumhole washer kit. Uh, and then I ended up getting the next day the correct thing, which is just literally oil in a bottle instead of like a whole what, asshole kit. What's the asshole kit include? And can you bring well, it? I, I didn't. I, I didn't open. I didn't open it because I was probably going to wrap it up and put it in your stocking. So let's go. Yeah, clap for me. I, clap for me. Gift for me. I love it. I love it. Fucking notion Santa. Notion claws right there, man. Holy shit. So yeah, I um, you know, just gonna feed little fella uh, that and his food for a little bit, lubricate his insides. I'm gonna also have to stick a lubricated Q tip up his asshole and see if there's anything um it's called impaction. <clears throat> it's called impaction if something's blocking his, you know pipes. Poo pipes. So yeah, okay. Dr. Nosh Dog over here. Fucking hell, mate, gotta have to do Nosh some the vet. 
guess so. Now I'm well, so saving right. 200, 200 bucks if I do it myself. Yeah, no. I well, can stick a Q-tip up his bum. I'm pretty sure. Two, right, it's probably more than 200 bucks. We had to induce vomiting on Barrington when he swallowed the pine cone. It was $320. Like, fuck my life. I mean, it saved his life, so whatever, but like. Yeah, fair enough. Fam, it's a, it's a lot. Yeah, it's definitely a lot. I'll see how I go with his. If I can't, you know, bring myself to stick it up his bum, I'll just have to just butt the bullet and do that. But I got the the, uh, the good tip with the mineral oil on the food, though. That was pretty cool. I've never seen that up anywhere on Google, so this vet helped it out, so. That's anyway, that's the, uh, the 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 Oris the tortoise update. And follow Oris at Oris the tortoise O R O S the tortoise on Instagram because he's cute as fuck. He really is. He's such a little cutie. He's uh, and it's cool to see him like keep growing and stuff. And uh, yeah, he's yeah. literally as big as my whole hand now. Yeah. So like, he's including tiny. the steak. Yeah, yeah, he used to be the size of like a weed grinder. And he now was he's... Uh, he was a weed grinder. <laughs> now he's a plate. Now he's like a, a, a like a teacup plate. There you go. It's a bit of a saucer. Like, like a side like a side plate. A saucer. Sauce in it. In it. Sauce in it. Shouts to Daniel. Sauce. Raw sauce. Um I love it. Oris updates for the children. Fucking oath they are, mate. Fucking shouts to ODB, mate. Fucking beauty. Yeah, mate. So with that, uh let's wrap her up. Um Let's get a thummy. Yeah, thummy. Let's fucking go. Make sure to shout out the old uh Bevo right here, mate. Fucking yeah. balls. Yeah, there it is. Hey. Fucking ready. Beauty, where can every cunt find you online, you fucking beautiful mate? Oh, mate, get your googs out. At Notion Baby on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. At Notion MTB on Instagram. Um, at Illnote Studios on Instagram and Facebook. Illnotestudios.com. Notionbeats.com. Brand new single, Since Never, on Thank Bandcamp you. and SoundCloud right now. Um, you can buy it for a dollar on Bandcamp, so give me a dollar for the bus and love you. See you, Fazy. Beautiful. You can get me, C-E-F-O-R, on Twitter and Instagram, C-E-T-M-F on Facebook and uh, TikTok. Um, guys, thank you for watching and listening, mate. If you enjoyed the episode, smash thumbs up, hit subscribe below, hit the notification bell. Ding dong. So you know where the new drops. Follow us everywhere at The Movement Fam. We drop in a party every Monday, 8 p.m. Eastern. We might take some time over Christmas. We'll see, because I think Christmas Day is a Sunday. So I reckon Sunday. we'll just keep recording up until actually next Sunday will probably be the last one we'll record. Then there'll be Christmas. Then it's New Year's. So we'll probably take Christmas and New Year's off. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, I don't want to yeah. go too long because we took such a long summer break. I don't want to like go massive, but I think we'll take the next Sunday probably be the last one for the year. Oh, so we have to do our wrap up uh, for then, eh? Oh, so yeah, true. Next Sunday. Oh, fuck. And I asked, uh, Sm- well, I guess I'll say, I asked Smoke World to come on next week because it's our uh, uh, release in the project, and we'd normally do that. Oh, but he could participate. He could participate in the uh, in the end of the year wrap up list too. Why not? Why not? Because he has a different perspective on us, so we could talk about the project, go through. So this week we'll do on that. We'll remember the three of us have to chat. But uh, everyone, appreciate y'all. We'll see you in the next one, mate. Fucking get, get a dog, dog through ya. Get a dog up ya, through ya. I can yeah, probably I, get this can up me. Yeah. I can you could you could fit it up there, mate. Oh yeah. Fit this right up me. Sideways. Bum, oh. Sideways. Oh, with yeah, the straight. Oh, straight. Yeah. With the enema. Oh, Woo. Enema juice. Woo, boo. oh. Take Catch it, a cunts. Get Catch a cunt. dog up ya dog.